Are there any unconventional sleep tips or things about sleep that, that we've overlooked? If, if we've mm. covered everything, great. But, um, you know, we here to keep the room cool. We here, uh, because of this temperature phenomenon, the light aspects, the considerations about alcohol, CBD, marijuana. But the question I have is uh, about any unconventional yeah. or lesser known things, or maybe you do things or you think about things just in a purely uh, exploratory way as a scientist of, you know, the, the what if uh, kind of things that, you know, what if it turns out that, and I hear I just, I, I've got a blank there for you to fill in. I think, you know, beyond the standard, you know, fur that I've dished out plenty of times of sleep hygiene of, you know, regularity, temperature, darkness, um, alcohol, caffeine, and we've, we've spoken about all of those. What are some more unconventional tips, I guess? The first one, which is unconventional along the lines of naps, if you've had a bad night of sleep, let's say that you're starting to emerge with insomnia and you've had a bad night of sleep, the advice, and I learned this from my wonderful colleague, Michael Perlis, do nothing. What I mean by that is don't wake up any later. Don't sleep in the following day to try and make up for it. Don't nap during the day. Don't consume extra caffeine to wake you up to try to get you through the day and don't go to bed any earlier to think that you're going to compensate. And I can explain all of those things, but if you wake up later, you're not going to be sleepy until later the evening. So you're going to go to bed at your normal time and you won't be sleeping. You'll think, well, I just came off a bad night of sleep and now I, I still, I'm, I can't even get to sleep and it's my normal time. It's because you slept in later than you would otherwise and re you reduce the window of adenosine accumulation before your normal bedtime. So don't go, don't wake up any later. Don't use more caffeine for the reasons that are obvious because that's only gonna crank you and keep you awake the following night or decrease the probability of a good following night of recovery sleep. Um, third, um, I mentioned don't take naps because once again, that will just take, you know, naps, particularly later in the afternoon, I almost liken them to snacking before a main meal. It just takes your appetite off the edge of that main meal of sleep, so don't do it. And then finally, don't go to bed any earlier. Resist and resist and go to bed at your normal time. What I want to try and do is prevent you from thinking, well, I had such a bad night last night and I normally go to bed at 10.30. I'm just gonna get into bed at nine o'clock because last night was just so bad but that's not your natural bedtime and it's not aligned with your natural chronotype because presumably you kind of know something about that or a morning type, evening type, and you're trying to sleep in harmony, which is usually how you get best quality sleep. But you go to bed at nine and my body is not ready to, to sleep at nine o'clock, but I'm worried because I had a bad night of sleep last night. So I get into bed and now I'm tossing and turning for the first hour and a half because it's not my natural sleep window, but I just thought it was a good idea. and. If I didn't know anything about sleep, I would think all of these same things too. So I'm not finger wagging, but after, if I have a bad night of sleep and I am not immune, just because I know a little bit about sleep, doesn't mean I don't have my bad nights, I do. Doesn't mean I haven't had bouts of insomnia in my life, I have. But after a bad night of sleep, I do nothing. I don't do any of those four things. I think the second tip um, I would offer in terms of unconventional is have a wind down routine. Many of us think of sleep as if it's like a light switch, that we just jump into bed and when we turn the light out, sleep should arrive in that same way. Just the binary, you know, it's on or it's off. Sleep is a physiological process. It's much more like landing a plane. It takes time to gradually descend down onto the terra firma of what we call good solid sleep at night. Find out whatever works for you, and it could be light stretching. I usually meditate um, for about 10 or 15 minutes uh, before bed. Some people like reading. Try not to watch television in bed. That's Something usually that advised emit against. Too much light to your eyes. Too eye. much light, yeah. too activating. You know, you can listen to a relaxing podcast, although we can speak about technology in the bedroom too. But have some kind of a wind down routine. It's, you know, it's almost like, you know, you wouldn't race into your garage and come to a, a, a screeching halt from 60 miles an hour. You typically down 
shift your gears and you slow down as you come into the garage. There's the same thing with, with sleep too. So that's the second thing. Have some kind of a wind down routine. Find what works for you. Maybe it's taking a hot bath or a warm shower and then stick to it. Just We do this with kids all the time. We find out what their bedroom, sorry, their bedtime regiment is. And then we just stick to it faithfully because we humans are the same way too. The third thing is a myth. Don't count sheep. There was a study done here at UC Berkeley. I didn't do the study. I wish I did. It was by my colleague, Professor Alison Harvey. And they found that counting sheep actually made it harder to fall asleep. It made matters worse. As a counter, uh, sorry, counter uh, measure to that, what they did find was that taking yourself on some kind of a mental walk. So think about a nice walk that you take in nature or a walk on the beach or even a walk around an Just urban environment that. and visualizing that that seemed to be beneficial. The other thing about um, sort of that idea of shifting focus away from your mind itself, get your mind off itself is a good piece of advice. Catharsis, you can try to write down all of the concerns that you have and do this not right before bed, but usually an hour or two before bed. Some people call, call it a worry journal. And to me, it's a little bit like closing down all of the emotional tabs on my browser. Because if I shut the computer down and all of those tabs are still open, I'm going to come back in the morning and the computer's red hot, the fan's going because it didn't go to sleep. Because it couldn't, because there were too many tabs active and open. I think it's the same way with sleep as well. So try to think about doing that. So just vomit out all of your concerns on the page. I you like know, that because my 3 a.m. waking is often associated with me writing down the list of things that I forgot to do that I need to do. Yeah. And in in once I eventually wake up from a, the later night, uh, second half of the night's sleep, that stuff seems much more tractable and reasonable, but uh, it sure would be great to get that stuff out of the way before sleep. Well, there's also something that I don't think people have spoken about a lot, and I'd like to research it, which is difficulty and anxiety at night in the dark is not the same difficulty and anxiety in the light of day. And when we have those thoughts at night, it comes with a magnitude of rumination and catastrophization that is disproportionate to that which you would describe when you are awake. And I don't know what's going on about the brain and thought and emotion at the time. I've got a bunch of theories as to why. And that's why I like the idea of closing up, zipping up all of those different components, just get them out on the page. And it feel, and I at first thought, this just sounds like hooey. It sounds very Berkeley. It's kind of come by our, we all hold hands and, you know, walk home at the end of the day. But then the, the data started coming out, really good studies from good people. And they found that keeping one of those journals decreased the time it takes you to fall asleep by 50%, five zero. Amazing. You know, it's well on that's par with any pharmaceutical agent. Oh. So that's the third thing. I think the fourth sort of little tip I would give that's unconventional is remove all clock faces from your bedroom. Including your phone. Including your phone. Because if you are having, you know, a tough night, Knowing that it's 3.22 in the morning or it's 4.48 in the morning does not help you in the slightest. And it's only going to make matters worse than better. So try to remove all clock faces. And I think that's one of those other tips that some people have found helpful. But those would be sort of some slightly unconventional, I guess, more than your stock fare of here are the five tips for sleep hygiene tonight.